you have just clicked on a video of a Halo review that was posted in 2022. So you're probably thinking, this is a waste of time. You people have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, well, you people have no idea just how right you are. But before you all go, you should know that that's exactly why I'm making this. I know I'm a couple years late to the party, but I only just got an Xbox and not for lack of trying. That means I can finally play Halo for the first time, ever. But am I too late? Everywhere I look, the people recommending it are the people who played it when it came out, and everyone seems to view it through their nostalgia goggles. If I force any of them to take off the goggles and ask whether the original Master Chief game is still a masterpiece game, the conversations always end the same way. Please don't go this way. No, no, you're still holding on! Let go! So? Time to do my own research. In the 20 years I haven't been playing Halo, I've played a lot of other modern shooters instead. I've gotten used to and, hell, become spoiled by the conveniences of modern video games. So my question is, is it too late to play Halo Combat Evolved in 2022? Shout out to all the Halo fans out there. I am so sorry. Let me take you on a journey. The year was 2001. Neopets was 8 spots ahead of Google in most traffic websites, and over 50,000 Kiwis identified their religion as Jedi on the New Zealand census thanks to a chain email. Yeah, 2001 got a bit touch and go there for a minute, so thank god for video games. Sony's PS2 had already sold 980,000 units in Japan just a day after it launched, and Nintendo had successfully launched the GameCube after what was just a mental unveiling the year before. Honestly, Nintendo are just so weird. But bonus points for consistency. As these two industry heavyweights squared off, there was another company that began to ask themselves... Could it really be that simple? So, when Bill Gates strutted onto that stage, I was excited when he said he was going to be carrying us into the... Future of video games. Bill Gates, you never cease to amaze The Rock. Whoa, with The Rock as well. All right, guys, I'm in. Go on then, Bill. Give us a bit of a tease of the future. The design here was driven by spending time with gamers. Are you sure this is a good idea? No, it's not a good idea. It's an awesome idea. Yeah, I guess it is. You know, actually putting the control in their hands. We tried out over 100 different form factors you know, to find what was the most comfortable and would give them the best game, game play. Okay, so turns out that whole thing was a lie. And the reason the controller was as big as it was is because the circuit board couldn't physically fit in anything smaller. Well, I'm sure Sony's controllers aren't any better. Feel the tension building under your finger as you draw your bow, pulling you deeper into your play. Damn, Sony, that's dope as hell. Okay, well, that is their newest one though. So maybe Microsoft can edge Nintendo. Shade. Baby. Baby? Seriously, what the fuck is happening over there? It didn't really matter though, because Bill had done enough in his pitch to get people excited, because the Xbox sold over one and a half million units before the end of 2001 alone. I have done nothing wrong ever in my life. I know this. And I love you. Money, please! My money. Now, as everyone knows, it's really all about the launch lineup, and you could ask anyone, what was the biggest launch game to come out of 2001? Heck, maybe even of all time, and one game will rise to the forefront of many a gamer's mind. Hey! Oh, I'm okay. Unfortunately, Shrek wasn't as good as we were all hoping it to be, but we did get a pretty neat consolation prize. Halo Combat Evolved was launched to critical acclaim, with publications calling it the most important launch game for any console ever, and easily one of the best shooters on any platform. The real selling point for yours truly though was GameSpot, saying, When I first got the game, I played it for about 10 hours straight. 
While I respect the absolute hell out of his delivery, this is actually pretty big praise to give a game in my opinion. But you know what? Challenge accepted. Time to take Halo for a spin and see how it holds up. Okay, quick disclaimer. Halo Combat Evolved has a few different versions floating around out there, all of different quality depending on who you ask. So before even starting, I had an important choice to make. I had this problem and if I choose option A, Ooh, but if I choose option B, oh no. I opted to go for the Anniversary Edition. This is part of the Master Chief Collection. I'm already putting a more than 20 year old game under the microscope, so I wanted it to be the most recent and accessible version that was out there. Now that's out of the way, let's get into it. First things first, I have to start by addressing the music in this game. I'd never heard any of it before, so I guess you could say I approached the whole situation mm, somewhat underprepared. I was not ready for how much this music slaps. I don't know what gave Bungie the right, but my god, they absolutely knocked it out of the park. I'll be honest, I play a lot of games with the volume off and a podcast on, but that's because I don't really pay attention to what I hear. Most things are in one ear and out the other, and I'm left scrambling if anyone asks me any follow-up questions. Uh, he called Bulbasaur. That's Onion Turtle. Geodude. Punchy Rock. Meowth. That cat with them long ass arms. But the more you hear this music, the more it makes you feel like Master Chief. Music matters, and so do the characters. Before Halo, this was the extent of my relationship with Cortana. All right, what do we have here? Cortana helps you manage your time, gets things done, and stay connected. Uh, pass. But things are different now. Cortana is a great character, and one that I genuinely enjoyed getting to know over the course of the campaign. She's funny, she's authoritative, a bit sassy, and do I have a crush on Cortana? Even after Chloe and Lee. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. Having an AI character that is written and performed like a regular human makes the AI even more interesting and unique, which is a great change to the type of AI we were promised for 2001. What's not a great change though is the AI and the UNSC soldiers that you have to deal with. I'm sorry, but they Ooh. suck. Ah! No wonder you play as the only person for the job, they've teamed you up with a bunch of Jerry's and even the simple tasks seem to throw them for a loop. Hey, you want to give us a hand with this? We're trying to figure out how to get the sound coming through the stereo instead of the TV. I, 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 it's very difficult. Oh, uh, well, is there an aux input? We tried that, but there's two different colors. But there's two different colors. Then there's the vehicles. I love that the game gives you options and variety, and anyone who's been to a subway knows that that is a winning combination. But in what world does a tank control more easily than a jeep? I mean, yeah, I'm probably the issue here, but other games don't make me feel like I'm the issue. The driving mechanics are almost identical to Borderlands, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm the designated driver of this house in Borderlands. Warthogs, by comparison, feel like they're made out of bricks. Are you there? The other thing that Halo throws at you in spades are guns. Lots of guns. This was the first time my muscle memory from modern shooters really began to work against me. If you're anything like me, you go into a first person shooter with the assumed knowledge that right triggers shoot and left triggers aim. Well, I hope you enjoy Suicide by Grenade because Zoom is R3 now suckers and all that Call of Duty is gonna let you down. Hard. While aim down sights didn't really exist in many games in 2001, it sure as shit exists now. I mean, there are entire games dedicated to that one mechanic. Oh god. Oh god! I think I'm gonna be sick! Long story short, it's a tough adjustment to get used to, to say the least. Aiming aside, if you were to ask me which I thought was worse out of the UNSC AI or the Warthog controls, I would probably tell you, I know the two of you are very different from each other in a lot of ways, but you have to understand that as far as grandpa's concerned, you're both pieces of shit. Yeah, I can prove it mathematically. Actually, l let me grab my whiteboard. This has been a long time coming anyway. What I can't get behind though, is the fact that the second half of the game has the most infuriating and boring level design I've ever seen. The game keeps you running around the same loop until I actually thought I'd gone insane. Ah, uh, yeah, nah, this whole thing is a circle, but not a real circle, more like a freaky circle. 
Let me give you an example, and I'll do you the kindness of speeding it up. Your objective is to run through a ship from point A to point B for reasons. Next, you'll need to run through a building where each room looks so damn similar that they actually have to put arrows on the ground so you know which way is which. This doesn't make any sense. Nah, nothing makes sense here, man. The only thing that does make sense is that nothing makes sense. Next, let's go to a library for some well-earned peace and quiet. Well, psych, bitch, this is the library from hell, and a never-ending swarm of annoying enemies is going to be chasing you the entire time. Also, everything still looks the same. Then, you get out of the library, thank God. But then guess what? You're told to go back through the same areas, just this time, and I can't stress this enough, in the opposite direction. This broke me. Uh, I'm done. So yeah, I know I'm probably coming across as just whinging about the level design, but it's such a shame because the first half of the game was going so well before it just decides to fall off the edge of a cliff. So, the question remains, is it too late to play Halo if you've never played it before? Have modern video games rendered this celebrated classic into a relic? I'll say this, whether you're new to it or not, it can't be argued that Halo is one of the most influential games ever made. Its characters are still charming, and its story is more than exciting enough to make me want to play Halo 2. But the moment to moment gameplay no longer dazzles as it once did, and its level design is actually the worst. So if Halo wants to be proudly displayed alongside its modern day counterparts, you could argue that it doesn't hit the nail on the head anymore. And I don't actually think that's a bad thing. If you play this game to appreciate it for what it did, it almost feels like looking through a time capsule or strolling through an old museum, and those imperfections give you an even greater appreciation for what you have now. On that merit alone, I think it's well worth spending 15 minutes checking out the intro, especially if you have Game Pass. If, however, you're just interested in a fun shooter and you're not looking to dive headfirst into all things Halo, then there are plenty of better options out there to focus your time on. Master Chief even has a stepbrother now, with a similar taste in, well, just about everything. So you could even try starting there. And as for is it too late to play Halo in 2022? The answer is no. The game still holds up incredibly well for the most part. Just be aware, the reasons that I would recommend that you play this game today are very different from the reasons for why it would have been recommended back in 2001. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and watching this video. I still don't really have any idea of what I'm doing, but I know I had a ton of fun doing this and I would love to do more. So let me know in the comments if there are any games you'd like to see videos like this for. I'm not sure what I'll do next. I'm thinking maybe Bully or the Alan Wake remaster at this stage, along with some Halo 2 if you enjoyed this one. So have a great day everyone, and I hope to see you back for some more of my ignorant opinions and unwavering bias in the next video.